MegCram.com. Welcome to another MegCram.com Board Vitals question. This one's from USMLE Step 1 and Comlex Level 1 Bank. A 35-year-old female was being evaluated for diabetes. She visited a diagnostic center to get a glucose tolerance test done. The attending staff at the center accidentally administered 10 times the dose of oral glucose which was supposed to be given. After some time, she showed neurological disturbances, and they sent her to the ED by ambulance. At the ED, she was found to have lactic acidosis. The physicians strongly suspect an inborn defect of carbohydrate metabolism. Which of the following enzymes is probably deficient in the patient, which led to lactic acidosis? And your five choices are A, glycogen synthase, B, liver phosphorylase, C, pyruvate dehydrogenase, D, phosphofructokinase 1, and E, muscle phosphorylase. Okay, so the thing that you've got to realize is what is the metabolism of glucose? So glucose is taken into the body, and it undergoes something called glycolysis. And that's a multi-step process that we don't want to necessarily go through completely. But the byproduct of this is something called pyruvate. And as a result of this, going from glucose to pyruvate, you actually get some ATP. Now, ATP is kind of the currency of energy in the body. So ATP is energy. Without this energy, your body will not work. However, this is not the majority way of getting energy from the body. What the body does is it takes pyruvate and goes through an enzyme called pyruvate dehydrogenase, which I'll abbreviate PD. And that leads us to an intermediate called acetyl-CoA. And acetyl-CoA then goes into Krebs cycle, which goes around and around and around. And the result of that is, in fact, ATP via mitochondria. So this involves NADH, FADH2. And we don't want to get into that specific. So this is kind of the overall thing. Glucose will go to pyruvate via something called glycolysis. And then pyruvate is converted into acetyl-CoA by pyruvate dehydrogenase. And then acetyl-CoA then goes into Krebs cycle, which is right here. It's complicated. And all the way around the cycle over and over again. And you make NADH and FADH2 and even a GTP. It all ends up being ATP after you go through the electron transport chain, which is in the matrix and inner membrane space of the mitochondria that makes ATP, okay? So this is the major way that ATP is made. Now, if there is a problem, for instance, right here with pyruvate dehydrogenase, in other words, if there is a, a shutdown of this enzyme, then what will happen is there'll have to be a switch somewhere. So pyruvate will then have to go somewhere else and be metabolized elsewhere. Now, the thing I haven't shown you here is that glycolysis also takes something called NAD+, which is very important, NAD+, and converts NAD+, into NADH, okay? So that's a reducing agent, and it's this NADH can actually also go to the electron transport chain and create ATP. Here's the problem. If you have glucose, which is going to pyruvate, and this is the only thing that's occurring, eventually what could happen is you could use up all of your NAD+. Okay. So what the body does is if you're unable to replenish your NAD+, here in the electron transport chain, pyruvate will then be converted and shuttled over to a different pathway. So in other words, if this pyruvate dehydrogenase is shutting down, pyruvate has to be metabolized in a way that will regenerate NAD plus so that you can continue with glycolysis and make ATP in this way. Because if this is shut down, you can't make it this way. So again, if pyruvate dehydrogenase is not working, you're not going to get ATP here. You're going to have to get ATP from here. And to be able to do that, you have to make sure you have enough NAD plus. To do that, the NADH has to be converted back into NAD plus and the way to do that is to convert pyruvate into lactic acid. 
And so therefore, when you see a problem with pyruvate dehydrogenase, you see a shuttling of pyruvate instead of going to acetyl-CoA, you see it going to this thing called lactic acid. So that's key to understand. So if we go back to the question stem, you'll notice that our patient here in the emergency room had a large amount of lactic acidosis. And that was after the patient was accidentally administered 10 times the dose of oral glucose, which was supposed to be given. So basically what we're seeing is that in this situation, there's so much glucose that's being made that it's flooding this pathway. And if this is the rate limiting step, or if there's some sort of problem here at pyruvate dehydrogenase, you're gonna get an increase in this pyruvate and the pyruvate is gonna be shuttled over to this lactic acid. And the reason is, is because you have to regenerate this NAD plus so you can get ATP. So based on these answer choices, what do you think the right answer is? And of course the answer is pyruvate dehydrogenase. The problem with it being glycogen synthase is because in glycogen synthase, you actually have a problem making glycogen and you have problems with hypoglycemia and you have to metabolize in a different way. So you get ketoacidosis, etc. The problem with liver phosphorylase is that you get only mild hypoglycemia and you get actually infiltration of the liver with glycogen. So that can't be it. We've already said that C is the right choice. Let's look at D. With phosphofructokinase 1, the thing that you've got to remember is that the issue is further up here in glycolysis. Because remember, phosphofructokinase 1 is the rate limiting step for the pathway of glycolysis. So what you actually see is a buildup of glycogen. You see actually very low levels of pyruvate and therefore lactic acid with exercise. And actually exercise tolerance is impaired. Finally, muscle phosphorylase is also known as McArdle syndrome, and it looks very similar to phosphofructokinase 1. There's poor exercise tolerance and issues with levels of glycogen, glucose, etc. And so not consistent with lactic acidosis, which is actually low in McArdle syndrome. So again, knowledge of the pathway, specifically that pyruvate has two fates. One is lactic acid that regenerates the NAD+. Plus, and the other is acetyl-CoA, which is the main way that it's metabolized in the Krebs cycle, which forms ATP via the electron transport chain. Thanks for joining us.